Hey kids, Miss Kulkani here. Let's continue with assets and bases. And let's talk about properties of assets and bases, also about buffers and some dissociation reactions. So let's begin now. Okay, these are the properties which are different for assets and bases. Some are physical properties and some are chemical properties. So what are those? Look at the taste. Taste is sour for acid, as you know. Bases are bitter. Then where are they found? We get in stomach acid and we get bases in soaps and cleaners. About the touch, simply acids are like water. Think about vinegar, it just feels like water. But bases are slippery, slimy, you don't feel like touching them. Electricity, they both will conduct electricity. They are good electrolytes. Reaction with metals, yes, acids can react with metals, but bases may not react with metals. The color, there is phenolphthalein, which is an indicator. It will remain colorless in acids and it will turn pink with base. Then there is blue litmus paper. And what happens with litmus paper? If it is blue litmus, that will turn red. And if you have a red litmus, that will turn blue. pH 0 to 7 for acids, 7 to 14 for bases. And which ions are more? The acids have hydrogen ion in excess and bases have hydroxide ion in excess. All right. Buffers. What exactly are buffers? These are solutions which can resist the change in pH. This is critical. Many reactions need to have exactly same pH. And then what are those buffer solutions? How do we make those? It is simply the mixture of two substances. It's a weak acid and conjugate base or a weak base and a conjugate acid. One of the common example of buffer solution is our own blood and pH is more or less maintained same. Here is one new term amphoteric or amphioprotic substances. What are those? Those are substances which can act as an acid or also as a base. It depends upon the circumstances. So they have kind of like dual nature or they are like moody chemicals. Okay. One of the example for amphoteric substance is water. In this first reaction, water is gaining a proton. So it acts as a base. In second reaction, water is losing a proton. So it's acting as an acid. Let's talk about polyprotic acids now. As the word suggests poly means many and protic is proton and proton in case of acid means hydrogen ion. So acids which have many protons and many hydrogen ions they will be called as polyprotic acids. Let's see which one of these are polyprotic acids. The first one HCl has only one hydrogen so that will not be a polyprotic acid. Second one is two hydrogen so yes it will be a polyprotic acid. The third one again it's one single hydrogen so it cannot be a polyprotic and over here there are two hydrogen so it will be a polyprotic acid. In this example below there is conversion given from phosphate ion to phosphoric acid and we have to find out which of the steps can be considered as amphioprotic. Amphioprotic is acid and base both. The substance should be able to donate and accept a proton. If you look at phosphate, it can only gain a proton. It cannot lose because it does not even have any proton. So this is not an example of amphioprotic. Let's look at this. From HPO4, 
it can lose a proton, it can go back to phosphate or it can gain a proton and it can also get to the next one. So this will be because of loss, this will be because of gain. So it could be classified as amphioprotic. Same thing goes with this. This can go back either way. So it will be an amphioprotic acid. When we come over here, this one can lose and get to the earlier acid, but there is nothing to gain here. That means it will not be an amphioprotic acid. This talks about acid-base dissociation reaction. And remember, we always need to have water present for dissociation of acids and also for bases. So it should be aqueous solution. In case of acids, dissociation is simply splitting the acid into hydrogen ion and remaining negative group and each of those will be in aqueous form. When we come to the next acid, it's going to be again hydrogen ion and it will be permanganate ion. Okay, this will be acetic acid, we get hydrogen and we get acetate ion. Alright, it gets interesting with the bases. If the base is like a hydroxide, it splits up and we get same way ions, barium with the charge positive 2 because that's in group 2 and we get hydroxide ion. How many hydroxide ions? Those are 2 and again they both are in aqueous. When it's aniline or triethylamine, amine bases, we are going to add water and I will write water as HOH. The reason is this hydrogen is taken up gain by the base and the reaction is simply the base with one extra hydrogen and then forming hydroxide ion. Same thing over here. Whatever the base is, put extra one hydrogen and then hydroxide ion and of course they all will be aqueous ion. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will see you in next video. Until then, bye bye.